Hello doctors, hope you are well and all right. I know all of you are busy in preparing for various exams in critical care medicine. Today I have few interesting clinical scenarios in infectious diseases. So let's start this discussion with MCQs followed by the rationale for correct options. So here is the question number one. A 66 year old man with diabetes, mellitus and obesity is admitted to the ICU with severe growing pain, fever and rapidly spreading erythematous rash in the groin region. The rash is very tender and firm to palpation. His blood pressure is 30, 86 over 38 and a pulse rate of 140. The hypotension is refractory to intravenous fluid resuscitation. What is the most appropriate order of interventions to manage this patient? A. Insert a central venous catheter. Start vasopressors. Obtain two sets of blood culture and start antibiotic therapy with vanco, meropenem and clindamycin. B. Start antibiotic therapy with banco, meropenem and clindamycin and obtain two sets of blood culture, surgical consult and start vasopressor. C. Start vasopressor, blood culture, antibiotic therapy with banco, paprasin, tazobactam and clindamycin, surgical consult. Okay. Or D. Start vasopressor, obtain two sets of blood culture, start antibiotic therapy with banco, paprasin, tazobactam and clindamycin, obtain CT or MRI of pelvis and the surgical consult for emergency debridement. So what should be the correct option? My friends, if you are working in trauma or surgery ICU, you may be dealing with such kind of cases very frequently. And this is the question regarding the soft tissue infection as per clinical examination finding, which says that the groin area is erythematous and tender. And this could be cellulitis or necrotizing fasciitis. Typical features of necrotizing fasciitis include the severe pain out of proportion to the appearance and the wooden hard induration of the subcutaneous tissue on palpation. Infection is usually polymicrobial caused by gram positive, gram negative bacteria and anaerobes. Okay? Anaerobes can be uh, bacteroids, clostridium or physobacterium. This patient has developed a septic shock with the focus being in the groin region and hence the priority should be stabilizing the hemodynamic parameters with the IV fluids and vasopressors. Now, the vasopressor therapy should not be delayed and hence may be commenced via peripheral line and later a central line may be placed. While you are putting a peripheral line, take a blood culture also. Okay. Now, regarding which antibiotic would be appropriate here, I would say piperacillin tazobactam is an appropriate component of first line regimen to cover the gram negative and gram positive organisms. There is no need to go for imuropenem as at, at this stage. Patients with risk factor for MRSA like tensile colonization, prior MRSA infection, recent hospitalization and recent antibiotic use should also be given the vancomycin, linozolid or daptomycin. Okay. For anaerobic coverage, clindamycin is a good choice. Moreover, it will be helpful to prevent a toxic shock syndrome caused by toxin producing streptococci and staphylococci. Now regarding the imaging, it can be delayed because the first priority is the hemodynamic stabilization followed by antibiotic administration within one hour. And then the urgent surgical exploration which is the definitive treatment to achieve the source control in septic shock. So there is no question of you know shifting the patient to CT or MRI at this stage. Now let's quickly move on to the next interesting clinical vignette. A 72 year old man or known case of COPD on for a COD 200 inhaler is shifted from a nursing home to the emergency department with fever and severe breathlessness. ABG is suggestive of mixed hypoxemic hypercarbic respiratory failure. He was hospitalized three months ago for a hip fracture and received antibiotics in the post-operative period. Chest X-ray demonstrates a right middle lobe opacity. What is the most appropriate antibiotic choice and the duration of her pneumonia? A. Piperacillin tazobactam for 5 to 7 days. B. Cefepim for 7 to 8 days. C. Levofloxacin for 7 to 8 days. Or D. Cefepim plus levofloxacin for 5 to 10 days. So, what are the points to pick up in this question? This patient had been the resident of nursing home and you would be thinking the diagnosis of healthcare associated pneumonia. But 
let me inform you here that in 2016 this category of pneumonia was eliminated from American Thoracic Society and Infectious Disease Society of America guidelines as it was thought to be overly sensitive and led to increased inappropriately broad antibiotic use. Okay, so in 2016 guideline HCAP that is healthcare associated pneumonia was removed. Okay, and now it include the categories of community acquired pneumonia, hospital acquired pneumonia and the ventilator associated pneumonia only three categories. The patient in this scenario does not meet the criteria for either HEP or FEP and should be treated in a similar fashion to a patient with the CAP admitted to the ICU. As this patient was residing in a nursing facility, which itself is a risk factor for pseudomonas pneumonia and two anti-pseudomonal antibiotics are recommended as initial therapy and the duration of therapy can be tailored to clinical course but no less than 5 days and no more than 10 days. The therapy is generally recommended. So, the choice D is the correct option. So, I hope that with these two MCQ, I have opened the discussion in the infectious disease series. More and more questions will be discussed in this series with interesting clinical vignettes. I hope you guys will be interested to watch more videos. So thank you so much for your attention and kindly subscribe to this channel for more videos. Thank you.